So just going over part one of the Transfigured Gems, we have Absolution of Inspiration, which uh, increased the uh, amount of minions you get, as well as gave you a lot more damage. So it's a lot more of a direct damage skill. Uh, we have the Animate Guardian of Smiting, which just has Smite instead of using an Aura, or instead of using um, the basic attack. And has but it and doesn't have extra life like the uh, main Animate Guardian. I don't really know what the benefit of having Animate Guardian have Smite is if it doesn't give an aura, unless it's our final opportunity to actually make a damaging Animate Guardian, in which case that's cool. We have a new arc that splits instead of chains. Cool. We have a second new arc, which does less damage, but does more damage per remaining chain, so it, it's a lot more focused on the chaining behavior. You might be able to make use of the Deadeye's chaining stuff, too. Uh, the There is now a uh, Barrage of Volley Fire, which just takes the Volley Fire Jewel and uh, adds it to Barrage. So, what that does... The first and final shot of the sequence fire 10 additional projectiles simultaneously. So, it fires... 11 projectiles, 1 projectile, 1 projectile, 11 projectiles. Just like the uh, old Volley Fire gem used to do, but now you don't need to have a gem socket for it, so that's pretty nice. We have a new Blade Blast, but it only works with Blade Vortex Blades, interestingly enough. Does more damage, has more AoE. We have Blade Blast 2 as a Nova Scale, which gains damage based on your equipped dagger, with a slower cast time. We have Blade Flurry, which has increased crit chance instead of damage. We now have a Blade Trap that uses two-handed weapons instead of just two one-handed weapons. We have another Blade Trap that only does one rotation of the of the damaging weapons, but has a much bigger bleeding buff, so I guess if you want to do Blade Trap bleed build. We have two new Blade Falls, neither of them leave lingering blades. The uh, first one is mainly focused on damage and crit. The second one doesn't deal extra crit damage, but it focuses on impale. So these are if you actually want to use Blade Blast or Blade Fall as a damaging skill rather than using it for the lingering blades. Uh, blade Storm just creates a random Blade Storm type rather than you setting a stance and using that type, either blood or sand. We have a uh, Blight with a dur smaller duration, less stacks, but it does more damage and spreads Contagion. We have a, another less duration Blight with a longer Hinder, so if you want to use it more as like a support skill. Uh, we have Blink Arrow with both Rain of Arrows and Elemental Hit on the clones, if you want to actually either apply your Culling Strike a bit better, or actually try to use Blink Arrow as a damaging skill, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know how the heck that's going to work. I guess having Elemental Hit does mean you can apply Elemental Ailments a lot easier, even if you're a build that doesn't apply that, especially seeing as they're clones, so they're minions, which means that if you, let's say, have Avatar of Fire and can't apply any other damage type, that would work. Or if you have Brutality and can't apply anything but physical damage, this would also work. So that's pretty useful. We have a uh, couple new Bone Shatters. Uh, one with a capped Trauma that resets at 10. It scales faster, and you take more damage for it, but I assume that it's just a simpler method, basically. Because the main Bone Shatter, I think, can just stack up into thousands, basically, if you want. Uh, bone Shatter 2 does not have trauma on it, which is kind of nice. I am kind of interested in that, because I don't really like the whole managing trauma effect of Bone Shatter damaging you every time you use it. And it has more damage effectiveness, so... I guess this is more just like a direct normal damage skill if you just want to use it without trauma, basically. Probably won't be as good as if you can actually get the trauma or version to work, but I mean, if you want to use it normally, it makes sense. Burning Arrow, but it adds fire damage based on maximum life. So I'm actually like super, super interested in that. At level 20, it adds fire damage equal to 24% of your maximum life. That is ridiculous. And that also means that you will be able to scale it a lot easier in the Chieftain area, area if you want to go bow. Because usually you have issues when you're over in Chieftain uh, when you're trying to use range skills because there's no bow skills over there. It's all pretty much just melee. But 
with this, you can scale both fire and health to damage things as well as dot, and you don't have to worry about going all the way over to the bow section as much. We have Caustic Arrow. This one does not have an inherent dot. I believe there's a uh, normal just secondary caustic effect that you usually get. But this one has a chance to poison if you want just normal poison versus uh, caustic ground. Uh, and then it has added chaos damage to add to the to the poison to make it even stronger. Uh, we have a cleave with rage on hit, which is pretty cool. Uh, cleave still sucks, but uh, as far as I know. But oh, it doesn't add flat physical damage, and it has no nearby enemy AOE scaling. Rage AOE scaling instead must use both an axe and a sword. Oh, that's cool, because there is a Ridgewald weapon combination that has a sword and a axe that are both rage-focused, if you work, if you use the two of them together. That's pretty cool. We have a new Cold Slap, where you use power charges to bypass the cooldown rather than frenzy charges, and there's no dot with it, it's just a direct damage scale that has faster, a bit faster casting, base crit, and larger AoE, and, well, again, it's not a dot scale anymore. That's something I really like, is being able to... With the Transfigured Gems, the ability to create the exact same gem again without having to design a new entire skill, but still be able to give it an entire archetype that it can use that's a different one, entirely different archetype, is really cool. I think that will allow GGG to make a lot more interesting gems in the future without having to spend as much development time on them. So in the end, we just win there. Like we, we just get so many extra gems because we're going to have over a hundred new gems this time. Sometimes, or a hundred new transfigured gems, uh, usually for new gems, like when they have to design something from scratch, we only get somewhere between like five and 15. Like I think the largest we've ever gotten is like 20 at once. And that was ridiculous, but we're going to have over 100 this time because of this method, which I think is really cool. Because there's a lot of things that I feel like you could div divide the skill into a couple different options, depending on how you want to run a build. And you don't have to cater to every audience now. You can just split the skill into multiple sections so each audience can use their own version. We have the new Consecrated Path, which you can gain a lot of damage and AoE per Endurance Charge. And when I say a lot, it's like 10% more AoE, 10% more damage per Endurance Charge. It's actually like, it's a huge, 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 huge buff if you scale Endurance Charges. I've been trying to make Consecrated Path build myself, and it has doubled the damage by using this gem now. So that's pretty nice. We have an alternate Contagion with uh, more damage over time. Does three quarters of the dot damage e instead each time it spreads with slower casting. Okay, so instead of it just being damage over time, it focuses more on spreading? Cast damage over time. If enemy dies while affected by Contagion, the debuff spreads to other enemies, but each time it spreads, it only de- Oh! Okay, so it decreases in damage every time it spreads by... It decreases by 25% of its damage every time it spreads. And it just keeps going until I assume it runs out of power. And then we have uh, Contagion of Transference, which is the other one which allows you to spread uh, when the affected enemy is hit. We next have... Crackling Lance. There's no intensity scaling on either of the new Crackling Lances. There's a low intensity mode and a high intensity mode. One that's more focused on AoE and spread, and one that's more focused on shock effect. Ah, uh, so more branching angle, and this one just has more shock effect. That's pretty cool. So this is a bit better for mapping, and this one is probably a bit better for bossing. Then we have two cremations that have been added. Uh, this one decreases the amount of geysers you can have from three down to one. And the second one, the Cremation of Volcano, increases the number of geysers from 3 to 6. It looks like the uh, damage on the Volcano one is much lower for obvious reasons of having much many more geysers to work with. 
Okay, so the first cremation one of exhuming, what's up? Cremation of exhuming. So this is the one that it detonates nearby corpses, which is kind of cool, as well as just norm like makes it it makes one corpse explode normally and then it detonates other corpses that are near it too. I assume just like a kind of miniature detonate dead, which is awesome. So I guess that's why there only needs to be one geyser because if you just dump one down, then there's the main scale and there's the detonate around it too which is pretty cool. And then the Volcano one is mostly focused on the just cremation skill itself, where you get to use it more, but you don't have any of the corpse detonation involved. We have a new Cyclone with uh, more attack speed and more AoE and uh, less movement speed per stage. Well, I guess that's kind of cool, but oh, it's kind of sad because movement speed's really nice. Though, the new... Uh, quality effect in the new league is going to be uh, increasing the movement speed, so this might just cancel out the movement speed increase you get from quality, basically, and just give it more attack speed and more AoE, which would be pretty cool. This would be more helpful for just sucking in people if you're using reverse... if you're using the reverse knockback, because a lot of people like to use reverse knockback to, like, drag large amounts of creatures in with you, using your Cyclone, which is, I guess, just one option. Uh, less movement speed per stage. Ooh, that's... Ooh, that's bad! And it's maximum six stages, so that's 60% less movement speed. Which basically means you'd be moving at a crawl by that point. So what we have next is the uh, Detonate Dead of Scavenging and Chain Reaction. So, Scavenging does not target any corpses that you have made, it only targets corpses that have existed that, like, you kill something, you get a corpse. And that is nice, because it does way more damage, but you do have to be a bit more careful how you use it, because you have a very limited number of corpses. And then there's Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction, which functions pretty much the same as normal, except it will consume up to eight corpses, blowing them up. So it does less damage, but it kind of acts a bit more like Ball Detonate Dead. So you don't have to... You're not required to use Unleash with this skill, or Expel Cascade, or Spell Echo to make it even remotely viable. We have the new Discharge of Misery. So, okay, so this uh, uses the um, Threshold Jewel that we had for Discharge originally. This is going to replace it. Basically, it removes the cooldown. It has less damage and less AoE, and it has no ailment penalty, but it doesn't have a cooldown, so you can use it as fast as you can generate charges, which, I mean, honestly, I really like that version to charge. I don't really like using cooldown skills as main skills, it just doesn't feel very good. Then we got two Divine Ires. Divine Ire is barely used, so we will see how this goes. Uh, the first one has more damage and deals even more damage to nearby enemies. Has less AoE, but deals damage in a Nova Burst. So does that mean that this is a Nova Skill now? No, it's not Nova Skill. It doesn't have the Nova Tag. And whether it has the Nova Tag or not is a big deal, because you'll be able to use Astral Projector otherwise, which allows you to just point wherever you want your Nova to be, rather than it being around you. So this is more of a bossing skill, the Divine Eye Fully Light. And then we have the Divine Ire of Disintegration, which has big damage, no enemies hit while charging, and big scaling. Okay, so this is a you charge up and hit once, versus the original Divine Ire, which is as you charge, you radiate damage each time you go up a level. Or you, you basically increase this charge by a stage. We have Dominating Blow, with uh, just like the... Absolution we got earlier, it decreases the number of minions that you can get through the skill, but it gives you a uh, big increase in damage based on how many, to, to you, based on how many, uh, how much minion damage you have. Then finally, we also have Double Strike, no double damage, no flat damage against bleeding enemies, but focuses on Impale, and has Impale Spread, which is pretty cool. Killing blows cause impales on enemies to reflect damage to surrounding enemies. That's pretty awesome. 
there's a lot of builds that focus on Impale, so this might actually be worth it. Generally, Double Strike sucks, but maybe you'll see some use now. And then we have Double Strike and Momentum, which focuses on, much like the Momentum Sport Gem, it focuses on gaining stages as you attack and dealing more attack speed with each stage. And then once you move, you lose all your stages. And that is, that is the part one of Transfigured Gems.